really, I think when you're going into a rebuild here and, and, you know, you're looking for underperforming players that you have confidence in, but the results really haven't played out yet in your favor, right? You know, Taji Spears obviously just scored, uh, uh, had had his best week uh, this past week, but previous to that, um, you know, really all the markers of everything were there and what you were seeing on the field were there, but it hadn't equated into a fantasy real breakout quite yet. And, and we had a, we had a little bit of a breakout, um, but it wasn't like anything crazy he took over the backfield. Um, but, you know, we have we're getting 50 percent of the Titan snaps weeks uh, four and five of the offensive snaps for Spears. Obviously, we've been kind of seeing that starting to play out a little bit. And, and Spears is is the guy that you're, uh, you know, the quintessential, I think, kind of a rebuilding sort of target right now, because I don't know that he's helping out anybody who's winning. He's really showing you that in a year or by the end of the year, he really could be the guy that you wanted to target in a lot of your rebuilding trades wouldn't be the main attraction to a trade for me. I don't think, um, but I'd be pegging him in a lot of trades. Big D uh, what's your general sentiments on, on something like this or Tajay Spears. Hold on a second, Casey. It's, it's very presumptuous of you to presume that Tajay Spears likes pegging. <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. I mean, there's nothing, not that there's anything wrong with that. Uh, no, for sure. No, do you? Yeah. Carry on. I mean, he does have Spears in his name. Um, <laughs> yeah. I mean, or whoever you want to do. <laughs> exactly. Spears for me is, is um, he, he's been a buy for, for a while just because of the usage sure. uh, that we've seen. Um, and, and you pointed it out uh, so eloquently that he's scoring some points, you know, this last week he got the touchdown. So it, it, pop those points up a little bit but for for um for a retool for a rebuild he's he's a great uh he's a great player in my opinion to target because you can see the path laid out in that offense they're not changing coaches they're pretty you know pretty pretty set there you can see that there's going to be an exit stage left at some point for for king henry um and you know from a rebuild perspective he's he's um you know, he's he. I, I threw a second at him, and and uh, and another running back uh, recently uh, got that done. Sean Tucker, I think it was. And you know, he's just one of those players that I'm I'm going to keep uh, keep an eyeball on and uh, and try to acquire where I can. Um, that touchdown, to be honest, kind of kind of throws off <laughs> throws off. You know, anytime they get they get uh, red zone points, you know, that's that's when right. they, they you know they they become a lot more popular. But uh, but he's he's definitely still on the target uh, target. Uh, train for me him and any of the running teams that have backups uh, you know especially young rookies like charbonnet like um uh i'm blanking on jacksonville um you tank know bigsby. Tank, tank bigsby um you know he was he was a darling come preseason and oh my god he's no, he's nowhere to be seen right but i think they're still worth stabs to me on rebuilds and and they're you know they're there's a reason why people like them coming out. Um, usage wise, they may it may be uh, not where you're at or not seeing it on the field, but but as far as um, thinking long term, they're they're definitely on my radar. Yeah, I mean you're you're essentially targeting young running backs with upside there. Um, you, you're trying That's to get weird. rid of all of your um, you know older aging running backs that are just mm-hmm. putting points in your lineup because hey, we're trying to get the best pick possible here so you're trying to get points out of your lineup so those big time a little bit older running backs you know you kind of want to maybe ship out and you're, you're looking for young running backs with upside running backs that can spike in value uh backup running backs that can spike in value like you kind of alluded to guys guys in the past years for us have been guys like ford and kyron and chuba and madison what those are the guys when i'm doing rebuilding deals that I'm trying to incorporate and get in there. I'm not trying to make them necessarily the main focus of a deal, but they're all guys with with big upside that if something happened to the main guy that we could get a spike. Is it guaranteed? No, of course not. But they're cheap. The value isn't crazy on them. Obviously, Madison, you know, was a little bit more sought after than some of those other guys, but still, you know, usually could be. Uh, wouldn't wouldn't be a deal breaker if you're like, hey, let me get Madison in this deal. I'm I'm giving you a great running back. Let, you know, let me get him back. And you know, all those guys obviously would would have some value on your team right now. And you know, whether you keep them or not, it's just trying to get that spike in value to make another move um, whilst in the rebuild. So uh, I think that's a really good point. I think. Taji Spears, like you said, is is the guy. The touchdown kind of hurts a little bit this week, but he's eighth in breakaway percentage. His pass block grade per PFF, he's number two overall with a 90.3 with, without ACLs. I mean, if he had ACLs, he would be number one for sure. Um, 
targets. He's tied for ninth with 19 receptions. Uh, he's he's got 14. He's uh, that's that's good for 12th overall. His yards per attempt are 5.8. That's fifth overall. Um, you know, this is elusive rating is 127.9. That's number three. So all of these uh, boxes he's checking of, of showing that he's explosive. He can be a pass catcher and a non liability uh, as a pass blocker is huge uh, for, you know, a player like that. Uh, some of what Kyron Williams uh, upside was a little bit. And I think if Kyron wouldn't have got hurt last year, maybe you would have seen a little bit more of this coming. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and we just didn't. And obviously, we nobody, I'm not going to sit here and think, said that I didn't think Akers would come in here and lead this backfield this year. But that's why you go after those backups because anything can happen. And, you know, now you've got, now, now you just really tripled, quadrupled the value of that guy you got for nothing. Um, so that's, that's kind of what you're trying to do here. Uh, you know, quadruple, double, triple values as fast as possible. So this only has to be a year or two process of a rebuild. Um, you know, so opposite of that is, is getting rid of aging players that are playing well. Like right now, Alvin Kamara just came back, you know, you had to hold him for a little while, but bang right off the rip, huge targets, first game, then a great second game. He's the guy that you're looking to, you know, kind of unload right now. What, what would be something if you're an Alvin Kamara owner that you would be, you know, trying to get right now, Matt, Uh, I guess I'd try to get two twos, but. I don't think you can get a late first. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't see a late first being in the cards for Alvin Kamara. Maybe just yet. If this keeps going and a and a, and a you know competitive team uh, saying, "Hey, I'm trying to win now," uh, I could I could see that potentially happen. But then there's also risk of of injury. Um, so that's always a risk. How long do you want to hold until you, the, the time is right to strike? And it seems like the time might be right enough to be able to strike with Alvin Kamara. Big D, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm trying to get a I'm trying to get a first uh, out the gate, right? And 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 adding a little bit of spice to it to, to make that happen if I if I need to. Um, but I, I think Matt's right. I think too. I I would take two seconds if somebody sent that to me in the team where I'm, you know, trying to trying to sell them. I, I definitely feel that value would probably get it done um but if i if i can if i could take kamara and add you know um adam Thielen as an example like add a add an older veteran wide receiver that's playing decent right now and and kind of tag those together and try to bundle that into a first i, I definitely would try that move first yeah. um but uh at the end of the day, you know, we, we, we talk a lot about what we want to get for players but every league's a little bit different and sometimes yeah. you know you can't you can't you should say that, oh, this person's definitely worth the first, but if you can only get two seconds, then get those two seconds and move on. I mean, especially if you're a, a real, real, like complete rebuild, you, you really need to do that. Yeah. I, I, I got a team I took over this year that has Alvin Kamara and Michael Thomas. And I think, you know, those would be Michael mm-hmm. Thomas has been pretty consistent. I don't, you know, I think he's a nice flex player. If you need a third wide receiver in a league uh, or you got, you had some injuries or, or some guys that aren't quite panning out every week. Alvin Kamara and Michael Thomas, obviously still on the same team. So maybe some people might be a little weary of that, uh, but they are kind of seemingly already being the engines of those teams. You know, it's, it's Olave, it's Thomas and it's Kamara as soon as you step back in. So um, th- those would be, I think like you said, those would be guys I'd be trying to maybe even pair up to get, you know, a little bit more to say, Hey, I'm, I'm helping you really fill out a lineup here. Uh, why don't you kick me back something, you know, Michael Thomas and AK and, and give me a first and, and, you know, a player that's maybe not crushing for you, like a maybe I could get, you know, Tank Dell back, or um, you know, even going further down, you know, maybe Rashi Rice or something, you know, try to get a younger wide receiver. And and when we're doing this, you know, typically I don't I don't want to trade. I'm not trading for any any running backs really when I'm in the middle of a real rebuild, uh, unless the value is so good and he's young enough uh, mm-hmm. and they're discounting him. A- other than that, I'm pretty much trying to stay away. Um, and, and mostly just get, you know, if it's super flex quarterbacks uh, and, and receivers, and then we'll, we'll play the running back game when it's time to be back in the fold. Cause they're just, we're seeing it, you know, right now they're, they're so vulnerable and, and, you know, you, you could be good value right now, but you don't need them and he's scoring points for you and, and all that stuff I mentioned earlier. So, yeah, uh, I, I think one of the other points before we get too far yeah. away from Spears is he's a target that I also look at as a contender, right? Like that, that, 
that trade that I mentioned, the second and, and Sean Tucker was actually on a contender team that I'm I'm aging out a little bit, but I'm still going for the championship. And this is a way for me to rebuild. So when we say rebuild, right, it's not always just rebuilding at at you know base level. You know, you're, you're sure. trying to you're trying to tank tank for Tua. Um, that was a couple of years ago, but but you know, it's also looking at it from a rebuild. Like, okay, I, I've got some age on my roster. I'm still competing. I'm not looking to move that age, but what can I, what can I do? What, what little moves can I do to help that my, my championship team and maybe rebuild isn't the right word, maybe retool or whatever catchphrase you want to use. But, but, it, but I think it's important, um, especially when you're talking about rookie running backs and things like that, those are, if, if you're not rebuilding, you could still be quote unquote rebuilding the base of your roster if right. you're a contender. Yeah, that's that's just the, you know that that's a good way of of to go about thinking about roster construction. Um, you know, obviously you get to a point where it's like, hey, at some point I don't care about ages or anything. I'm trying to win, but if you can strategically kind of move through the season with that in the back of your mind, I think that's a really good point. Of of you know, obviously any of these guys aren't necessarily just a rebuild target, but you know the idea of them. But that's a really good point to be able to kind of turn over the bottom of that older roster and still get guys who aren't <laughs> going to necessarily hurt you this year and and could really be huge by the end of the year so i think that's a, a really astute observation over there by big big d uh and a, and a really really good point you know and then you you kind of hit some other running backs there like a, any of those rookie running backs that haven't blown up the kendra the, the you know the charbonnet the um you know any of the tank Bigsby's uh, Roshans, you know, we've been telling you to buy a few of those guys already, but any of those younger guys that hadn't blown up yet for sure. Um, because it, it, you know, that, that could blow up. And, and like I said, get you a little bit more value, get you, get you an extra first, second, third, one way or another, or get you another big fish uh, in a trade, you know, and then on the other side of that, there's um, you know, there's guys like, that are in, like I said at the beginning of this, underperforming players that you have confidence in that, that you haven't seen the results uh, be in your favor yet, like, such as, you know, any player on the Falcons. You know, I'm, I'm still buying Drake London. I'm still buying Kyle Pitts if I'm if I'm in that rebuild phase. Th these are guys that I, I feel are very, very talented. We're just not seeing the top of the top. And that's those are the kinds of guys that I want to invest in. And, and you know, Kyle Pitts is still only 22, 23 years old. And, it, you know, everybody hates him at this point. So, you know, those are targets for me. Guys like that, you know, Jahan Dotson, who's, you know, if you watch some some all 22, he, he's getting open plenty. Kyle Pitts is getting open plenty. Maybe just don't quite use Kyle Pitts as much as in the kind of receiver role. Keep him in the tight end with the mismatches. And and finally, this this week, you saw a little bit of that. Uh, you saw him with it with the air yards and the target share. Nobody, no tight end even being kind of close to what he's he's he did and, and kind of has been doing just hasn't been connecting with that. And, you know, we've seen it in glimpses from Drake London, even in this season, he hasn't been killing you, but he's not putting anybody over the top and people get awfully, um, you know, anxious uh, and, and an unpatient in season. So, you know, those kind of players, Jahan, good player. I, I don't know if, if big D, if you have some more kind of those kind of guys that are, are always at the tip of your tongue, just, be checking if like you said those guys aren't even per se rebuild guys if i can grab them with a good team of mine mm -hmm. um because somebody is impatient for sure but you know the general idea is rebuild so do you have like a, a kind of a rolling list of those those guys that you like kind of, kind of a little bit that's kind of what i've been doing the last two years with nico and yeah. now we're seeing it come to fruition right mm -hmm. i i traded at, at me and me and jason have a team i think uh, and halfway through the season last year, it wasn't going super great. And Kareem Hunt was kind of tailing off a little bit. We traded Kareem Hunt for a two and Nico, and that that is that was excellent. You know, yeah. Um, I traded Gallup for Nico last year at the beginning of the season. Yeah, awesome. And you know, Nico's been a guy that we've been targeting. And, and dude, dude, they all don't work out. I, we were naming some guys that worked out. Sometimes the guys in the rebuild don't really work out. But that's also the reason why I don't just specifically just target a lot of those running backs that I was talking about. Nico would have been a guy that I would have, uh, you know, for sure targeted. Um, but big D you, you got a couple of, uh, tight ends or wide receivers or quarterbacks that you like to kind of target here in these situations. Yeah. I mean, Jacoby Myers is one that comes to mind um, quite often just because he's cheap. Um, yeah, and doesn't he's, get the respect. He, he doesn't get the respect. Um, you know, Matt, um, more on the higher echelon, I, I would say like, uh, Michael Pittman, 
Um, I, I think that oftentimes you can you can find value on Pittman that you, you you'd be surprised as to what you could get him for, and 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 people tend to. You know, he, he he got a little bit of publicity, and I think with Gardner Minshew in there now, there there's uh, there's definitely going to be a target spike. And you know, and when I'm looking at those type of players, I'm looking to maybe move a Sutton or something like that, and try to try to capture those. Whether it's yeah. rebuild um, on the low end of my team or a rebuild, and I'm a champion, you know, and I'm trying to try, trying to re-rack. Um, Elijah Moore also comes to mind. He's you know, these are just some cheap cheap targets in my opinion. Michael um, Michael. Arizona wide receiver Wilson. rookie. What was that? Michael Wilson. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, Michael. I, I think I've, because I'm a Seahawk fan, right? Wilson just kind of got eliminated <laughs> from my brain, but uh, Michael, Michael Wilson is, is another one that I, I, you know, I like to target. Um, and most of the time it's because I can get those done with relatively not too much damage to my own roster, whether it's rebuild or not. And, um, and, or, um, uh, relatively appropriate, um, prices, you know, some of the people that I try to stay away from, like, um, like a two, two at well, you know, he's, he's got some, he's got some, some chop going right now, but I, I, I tend to stay away from him. I, 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 Oh, wait, we got to back up for a second. I, Cause I forgot to tell you my boy, Christian Kirk, you know, mm. the one, the, the one in Jacksonville over there, mm-hmm. um, crushing, uh, crushing baby. He's, uh, he, he's, he, you know, he's, he's one of those players that I, I just like those gritty wide receiver two you know, can, can pop them in for, for various reasons. They're, they're not going to win you a league by themselves, but they're going to win you championships in the long run because they're consistently putting points in your lineup. And there's a, uh, a term that um, is used in finance called compound interest. He's a compound interest kind of player to me. He just, he constantly keeps adding value to my lineup. And, and it's, you know, so it's players like that, that the, those are the kind of the, from a wide receiver anyways, that's, that's kind of my, my targets. Yeah, and I've I've been seeing some some you know some people who were really heavily rely, trying to rely on Garrett Wilson this year, whose grips seem to be mm-hmm. loosening a little bit. They were competitive teams, and yeah, you may have to pay a little bit more for these for for a Garrett Wilson. But we know the talents there, yeah. and you know they're not gonna they're not gonna sit on their hands. And and you know, unfortunately, we got eleven seconds of Rogers. Seems like he'll be back, but you know, moving forward, like a, a guy like Garrett Wilson, who's wide receiver twenty seven right now. Um, you know, there was, you know, uh, I, I think there's some opportunity to buy somebody like, like a Garrett Wilson, who was, you know, widely regarded as, as the wide receiver, you know, three, four or five coming in, uh, to the off season, you know, and all of a sudden he's not performing. So there's guys ready to, uh, to jump ship for, I think far less than what it would have taken to, to grab him in the beginning of the season. Um, mm-hmm. and you know, so you can capitalize on on somebody who's in a position that wants to win now. And maybe I have, you know, maybe I got a Keenan Allen who's crushing right now and I'm in the middle of a rebuild and I can I can float Keenan Allen and and, you know, maybe I have a bunch of first Keenan Allen and a first or, you know, just find a way to what what's how many different trade offers can I send this guy to figure out what the combination is to get Garrett Wilson from him um, and put him on my rebuilding squad. So, um that's- yeah, or on the flip side, if you've got some veterans, right? If I got Tyreek Hill and I'm and I'm realized that I'm just I'm not going to be able to make it, I'm right. running out of gas. You know, maybe he's somebody that I that I look to move for Justin Jefferson as an example. Right. Those, those are big moves. Those are those, right. those take a little bit more negotiation than just a random trade in the inbox. But mm-hmm. but so, you know you know if, if you know somebody is really going for it, if you if you see how they've lined up and the moves that they did, and you paid attention to your league, and you don't have 89 leagues, so you actually are paying attention to what's <laughs> going on in the. Sure. And the and the thing, there, the, sometimes you can get away with the, some stuff like that. And and uh, um, I, I was also thinking about, um, you know, from the tight end perspective, it's been kind of interesting. Um, I don't know if there's anybody besides like Cole Komet that I'm really going after at this point in tight end because everybody else that I really like seems to have <laughs> kind of popped off. So it's it's hard to hard to get it done. And, and Cole Komet also has, has popped off. But I'm more to me, it's worth paying a little bit up for him. But I. I do you have any any of you boys have any tight end targets that you're looking at when we're talking about like, like this? I mean, I'm I'm, I'm still. I, I was gonna say I would say I'm gonna I'm gonna steal Casey's and say McBreezy. Yeah, yeah, Trey McBride for sure. He's mm-hmm. he's uh he's checking a lot of boxes, just not getting the quite the burn. Um, you know, I still like Chig. Uh, there's you know, 
he's he's getting all the all the tick marks that you like to see from the analytical profile kind of stuff but it's just you know we know that there, there's going to be some sort of a different quarterback situation uh, moving forward in in Tennessee next year and their offensive line has got to get better um, so you know Chig uh, obviously Kincaid right now you know isn't isn't doing it um, I like Musgrave who hasn't really popped off I know all these guys are a bit younger I mentioned Pitt off off the jump Granson would be a tight end that I'd be like a, like a throw in kind of like that backup running back where it's mm-hmm. possible. I know Jelani Woods, you know, I was just going to mention Jelani as my guy uh, that I'd be buying potentially, but yeah, th- th- those kind of guys right now that, that I've, well, ha- I have faith in, I think they're good players. Um, you know, Kate Otten's been a guy who's, who's been out there and, and they, mm-hmm. the, the bucks seem pretty comfortable with them. Um, so could uh, be a nice like, little buy window for Pat Fryermuth as well yeah, too. He's definitely waiting, underperformed as well. Waiting for that Penn State plug. I was wondering where it was at. <laughs> so I'm not telling you to buy Mike Kosicki. <laughs> yeah. This is yeah. why this is why you should have listened to me all last year when I was saying to buy Jake Ferguson. <laughs> for sure. I, I think the other person up. um that I was looking at and I uh Cole Turner um, yeah. in Washington, just the way that they're using Logan Thomas mm-hmm. and the way that that offense is running and how they just, you know, Eric Great the enemy call. forgets that they have wide receivers. Sometimes it seems he's basically <laughs> yeah. brought in the KC offense there. Right. Like, right. I, like he, he's somebody that I think you can get for dirt cheap that that could turn, turn, you know, turn some spades, get you hit on the river type, type yeah. of type of move there. So I agree. Um, Speaking of cheap guys, what about Brandon strange? That's strange. Yeah, I mean, uh, he, uh, sure, and I guess it's a Penn State guy, so uh, throw him on the bottom of the roster. Uh, the very, uh, the very bottom of a thirty-man <laughs> roster. I, teams. Before we get out of here, you know, I, I, I want to, I want to hit on like a guy like Gabe Davis. So on a rebuilding team, let's say you know you're, he's twenty-four years old, he's wide receiver fourteen right now, um, he's second on the team in targets. He's he's had a TD in the last four games. He's fifth in a dot with sixteen point five. Um, his um, yards per reception is seventeen point eight. That's ninth overall. Uh, so you know a lot of really good marks here for Davis scoring touchdowns <clears throat> on on Josh Allen's radar here. Anything good over expected? What do you yeah, probably <laughs> what uh what do you do with a guy like Gabe Davis on a rebuild? Ship Big him deal. out. I'd ship him out. I think this is I think this is expensive MVS all over again. I, I think he's on a contract year, so Kincaid's probably somebody we're talking about tight ends, somebody mm-hmm. that I'd target. Um be, be, and I and I definitely think I would ship out Gabe. I think he's He's being featured, but I, I, it's hard for me to see him signing back with Buffalo again, um, especially if he continues to have a decent year. I, I think that he's going to try to go get get some money, get out of the snow, and uh, and and so for me, he's he's definitely a he's definitely a see you later. Maybe combine him with somebody. Maybe his his name has been been thrown about, but um, but he also has had some really major inconsistencies that have hurt other players and so maybe he's he's one of those players where you've got to tag him up with you know another piece um, right. um an aging running back or something and go you know try to get a tier or try to get a first or something to that effect but um but he yeah he's 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 a great player to mention because he's definitely somebody that I'm, that I would try to move on from personally yeah i just wanted to talk about him because we talked about kind of the extremes and he kind of mm-hmm. seems to be somebody who's right in the middle having a nice little season and and what would you do with somebody like that and it's probably case by case you know yeah um, I'm hanging on to a guy like Nico where I'm, I am probably trying to sell a guy like Gabe Davis right now, just cause I, you know, it's, it's like I stated at the beginning of this, it's, you know, I'm, I'm buying underperforming players you have confidence in and it hasn't played in your favor. And I'm selling players you don't have confidence in moving forward who you feel are overperforming. I don't necessarily know that Gabe Davis is, is overperforming. I think this is in the range of outcomes. This is what we kind of mm-hmm. thought. This is a post hype sleeper kind of guy. Yeah. Um, but it, it it you know it just it worries me a little bit that you're you're getting some value back on him. I think I think I would maybe um, you know ring the register if I if I could uh, really on any team. But I just wanted to mention him on a rebuilding team. What what your general thoughts were with somebody who's a little on the younger side and sort of ascending. So have you guys put any feelers out for JSN with his meaningless production thus far? No, but that's a great, you know, rebuilding piece as well. He hasn't done anything and maybe people are getting, he's, you know, he's just on the, he's basically a, a fancy, he's basically a Rolls Royce uh, emblem, you know, just right now that, you know, you ripped off a car and you hang around your neck. It's, it's not actually driving the car. It's just, you're, you're acting like you're, 
you know, it's just a, a symbol to show people that, hey, look at this thing I got on the bottom of my bench. Yeah, I've seen a lot of an uh, analysis um, on JSN on on the on X on Twitter that talks about you know they're like what well, watch his game tape you know show you know what why are they not using him that way and I think we had an offline discussion I don't think we've talked about this on the pod is um, the offensive line there in Seattle is pretty 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 bad it should be getting healthier um, yeah. and the tight ends have been blocking a lot so I think that JSN's been taking a lot of that um, tight end work um, you know short over the middle kind of slotty but like closer to the line slotty no slotty thoughts and um and it, so i think as the season wears on as the season continues to go and the seahawks now coming off a bye have gotten a little bit healthy this would be a good time to start putting out some some feelers for him because i do think that his you know i don't know his air yards his 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 targets down the field are going to increase um mm-hmm. once he's not being put in a role that um that is closer to the line of scrimmage Right. And he, he also in the beginning of the season, right before the season, there was all that he needed risk, this and that. And so like there were there was talks of him maybe even starting the season on IR. So, you know, some of that could also be playing in like, hey, we, we don't need to do anything with this guy right now. We're not in the best position as far as how we would want to use him anyway. So let's kind of just let's pump the brakes on him and try to, you know, get him right. So, you know, as things move forward, we, we have our guy. And if God forbid anything happens to lock it, uh, we got to mm-hmm. plug and play. Uh, guy right on the other side there so i also think it'll be interesting to see what addison does without jj there um yeah. you know i think that's going to be really i don't know if it'll be telling especially if they if you know there's there's rumors that minnesota might move on from from um kirk cousins thank you yeah i don't know why my brain's on slow today but uh if they move on from kirk cousins that's going to be you know i i hope they don't because i'd like to see what addison looks like in that offense when you know when uh JJ's not there because that, that, that might increase my buy potential on him. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I think I've gone on record early in the season of saying he's kind of vanilla to me. He's not a bad receiver that vanilla isn't a bad thing. A lot of people love vanilla as their primary flavor, but a lot of people uh, do not like that vanilla reference though. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. People hated it. But, but my, my point is, is like, if he's not vanilla, he's going to show it right now. Is he Rocky road or, you know, like I, I think that he's got a chance now you know, with JJ out to, to really in my, you know, and he doesn't have to prove anything to me. He makes way more money than I do, but, um, but, you know, but he has a chance now to kind of prove that he's worth that pick. He's, you know, he's, you know, I know the offense is probably going to go through Hawk, but he's going to be the second read and he should, he should perform. So we'll see how, yeah. how that works out. Yeah. I think he landed in a good spot. Like we've talked about all off season. I, th- I think he'll be, he'll be just fine. He was, he was good last week after, after a zero the week before yeah. um, <clears throat> when played, he's been, you know, they, they've used him as a tool down the field. Um, you know, so I think you'll get a little bit better scope of usage, maybe all over the place. So I think that's a good point. Uh, so, all right, well, we can, we can kind of wrap this discussion up. This was kind of a, a plain vanilla, uh, you know, cliche conversation of, of rebuild talk and, and kind of some guys to, to, to target, which, you know, obviously buy the young guys, sell the old guys. It's a tale as old as time, you know, but trying to give you a couple of examples, some, some rationale there. And then what I, what we really want to do and, and how this really can be applied. And I think is best uh, for consumption is taking a team, an actual team with an actual roster and saying, Hey, this is how you do this. Instead of just saying, you know, basically the same shit over and over again. Get rid of your old guys, get young guys, uh, essentially. And, you know, the best way to do anything, uh, rebuilding or winning leagues is sending about one million trade offers and not getting offended. If At somebody, least a thousand. If somebody doesn't like it or, you know, if, if they if they come back with a bitchy message, just say, hey, my bad, man, all good. You know, yeah, don't to ruin any you. trade partners yeah. by being a dickhead. You know, kill yeah. them with kindness. Right. That's really there's really no reason who gives a shit over like, and o- like Marshawn Lynch. Right. Over, over, over and over and over again the, over the, the most over success again. i have is is being active um and, yeah. and just over, literally and just over again finding the people's because like you said at one point in this uh show big d like every league's different everybody's values are a little different yes right. we get in a big group uh sense of we kind of have an idea of where everybody's value lies but i mean that's then, not true then you for get everybody. In your home leagues and that shit can go right out the window. You know, you send you send the same offer mm-hmm. to a couple of guys just as like a starter offer, and you know, everybody else tells you an idiot, and one guy's like, oh, you know, he might either just accept it right away or at least send a counter where mm-hmm. we're like, hey, we could work with this. Uh, so 
Yeah. yeah. Well, and values, values are, are different a lot too, right? right. Uh, you know, not just um, obviously tight end premium or extreme tight end premiums, you know, those kind of things, you know, your PPRs comparison to your half PPRs, but also your lineups. Like if you are starting uh, four flex, Gabe Davis may be somebody that I might hold on to because that's the kind of player that I might want to throw in a throw in a, a, a right. large flex. Like our our Patreon FFD three is a large flex, um, you know, starting lineup, and so certain players not I may Gabe Davis. <laughs> not yeah not Gabe, but but certain players I may have um, you know a different view on, and so yeah I think it'll be it'll be great to have what we call use cases to to really go through and kind of kind of piece together some of this and you. You can uh, you can take that information and, and try to apply it to your league and hopefully it'll it'll yeah. it'll do you good. Or, you know, after we're talking for, you know, 30 minutes on this, you could say one of the examples that we provided was dumb and that there's no way that you would ever do that in one million years. So which always happens with every single video of, you know, you get into a rebuild discussion and like, oh, never do like, all right, man, like. We literally just talked for 30 minutes, provided a million examples uh, and do it for hours a week. And, and that one example made you upset. Well, you know, that's the guy who gets upset in the uh, in the trade thing. So on the comment, you just kill him with kindness. Mm -hmm. Keep it moving. Thanks um, for the comment. It helps the algorithm. Yeah. You jackass. <laughs> but we no, but if you, you don't well. know, yeah, if you disagree, right. comment. That's 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 part of the game, man. Just yeah. no veto. Comment down down below if you don't like something. Yeah, you I know, get wrong shit all the time. So yeah. it's all good, man. Not like, that wrong. <laughs> not that often. Uh, yeah, <laughs> we're we're, we're better than we're we're better than baseball players. Let's put it that way. So. Yeah, try to. Well, I hope so. <laughs> uh, so anyway, be sure to like, subscribe, comment below, five star review, all that jazz. Make you know that you need that subscription because we're about to hit you with a couple of actual like Patreon teams where we go through some rebuilding action we're about to hit that point of the season where everybody's going to really be in trading mode uh whether it's winners losers you know all around so we're going to get actual examples of actual, actual patrons um and at uh, teams and go through how how we would go about rebuilding because you know there's a, a whole bunch of theory involved in all that kind of stuff so very case by case. So we're going to hop over to Patreon right now, do a little Patreon show, talk about some trades. Uh, somebody wants to trade Bijan away and, and keeps asking what, what he's worth on a rebuild. So, you know, we're going to dive into some of that. And, don't do it. I mean, it's fine. You could do it. You just, you can't be, you can't be doing it for a guy like Barkley in a first. Like that's, you can't be doing that. Like that's not what you want to do in a rebuild just because you need to like, you want to spread it out a little bit. You got to, you got to spread, be patient. You can't, jump on the first shit we had a home league where a guy was trying to rebuild and he threw all his bullets out the window so fast with like he sent one round of like trades out he's like today i'm rebuilding today right he sent a, a bunch of trades out and then like uh, they all got done in like a day and it's like dude no you need to massage this motherfucker out yeah. you need to figure out what the most i can get you need to be in discussions with four or five different people and, and weed out who's going to give you the most for these particular guys and then pit them so, against each other right all right we appreciate you guys. We'll catch you next time. At Big D, Matt, how you guys doing? Hey, we're great. <laughs> I thought I heard the outro music playing like five minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's how it goes over here because we're married to the game. <laughs> Peace. <laughs>